Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the house of the Lord. What a great joy it is to have you with us here today. We are all one family in his name. No one outranks anyone else. We're here at the pleasure of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we are a vital part of what the Lord is accomplishing in this day and in this place. And we do welcome those who are watching either through drive up or virtual worship. You're part of the family too, and we give you a virtual embrace, and we certainly look for the day when we can all hug without a second thought. I remind you to text me any joys and concerns that you might have, and we will certainly share those joys or concerns later in worship. My phone number is on your insert in the bulletin. We're having a new member orientation in the fellowship hall through these doors on either side. Now, anybody that goes back for the new member orientation, either the prospective members or the elders, watch your step. I have microphone cords set up, and so please be careful. And um, both elders and prospective new members, we hope and pray that you'll have good fellowship. It'll take me a moment to arrive because I'm shaking hand, well, fist bumping. These days, I'll be fist bumping with folks outside the sanctuary as they leave, so it'll take me a few minutes. So I charge you all to have great fellowship together, and uh, we look forward to that. Also, the property committee wants us to know that the luncheon this month will be on August 28th. So, on August 28th, after worship, they're going to treat us to walking tacos. If you have never had a walking taco, you're in for a treat. That's on Sunday the 28th. Well, today is Ukirk Sunday in our Presbytery. This is the Sunday when we pray for our college ministries across the country, and especially at Florida State and in the Tallahassee area where <clears throat> we have UKIRK. Now, it used to be called PUC, Presbyterian University Center. So some people say, what in the world does UKIRK mean? Well, Kirk is the Scottish word for church. And, of course, our tradition is Scotch Presbyterian. And U stands for university, so university church. And uh, so today is U Kirk Sunday, and we are privileged to have Christy Stacy. Uh, she is our board member from our church to U Kirk. And now, be easy on her after church. She doesn't know everything because she hasn't actually been to a meeting yet. But, uh, Christy, I'd like to call you forward to offer a minute for mission. And uh, you, after worship, you feel free to hug Christy and thank her for being our liaison with this vital ministry. Good morning, everyone. I do have big shoes to fill because uh, she has been our I have been there for a dinner. Several of y'all were there to dinner. Uh, they have our first meeting on Tuesday, but of course I have a webinar all day, so I can't get there, so I get to watch on the screen. <laughs> see how that goes. So here's my minute for mission. We can all be proud of you, Kirk, our Presbyterian campus ministry at Florida State University, led by 
Open mic nights bring folks who might not otherwise enter a campus ministry building. Hospitality saves the community. We can all be proud of these folks. And I'll keep going for as long as you want. Thank you. Thank you.
broke it. <laughs> you won't be able to get a good night's sleep until it's replaced. And pray for Mary Lindsay, who is seeking employment while being under the weather. We ask that we pray for her to have discernment. terrible if I went off script for a moment? Well, you're holding your breaths, aren't you? Well, we don't have an anthem this week, and you know, in August, our new director of music will be with us, and we do look forward to the choir returning and so forth. But you know, I was visiting our shut-ins yesterday, and I had particular fun with um, Marlene's mom, Ruth, uh, going over, you know, all those old Christian camp songs we used to sing and know, and so I thought, since we don't have an anthem today, and you know, we never cared how good we sounded around the campfire, um, if you know, if you know any of these why don't you join with me briefly and we'll just have a little fun. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Look away beyond the blue. Now do you remember we are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Soldiers of the cross. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. We now will return to our regular order of worship. And the prayer concerns today, traveling mercies for the Dickman and Kinnear family as they take off on their vacation. Remember to pray for some of the folks along the way. They had to change their itinerary because some of their family has come down with COVID. So let's see what else. Prayers for the Wynell kids. Jackie will be flying back from Ketchikan, Alaska to Boston this evening. And Theo is flying up there to visit her tomorrow. So traveling mercies for both of them. You know, I had a friend in Seattle when I was growing up there who his name was Ketchikan Cal. So uh, I, I've never been there, but uh, we will definitely be in prayer. Let us come before God as a family in prayer. Lord, we are filled with the joy of knowing that you love us, that no matter what the world may throw our way, that you have us in the palm of your hand. We thank you for the grace of Jesus Christ earned on the cross that gives us forgiveness and refreshes us in each new day. We can hit a reset button. There's always time. Even the thief on the cross could turn to Jesus for compassion and mercy. We're also grateful, Lord, for the blessings you've given us. We promise, Lord, that we will not simply hold tightly to everything we've been given, but instead we will share joyously and generously. We thank you for the blessings of this hour. Somehow, Lord, even if we're having some physical pain or discomfort, even if there is a crossroads in our lives that's leaving us with consternation or anxiety, even if we're not as young as we used to be, somehow when we gather in the sanctuary of our God, we feel blessed. We feel a smile 
curling up on our lips. We feel the Spirit dwelling in us. Lord, we know that each of us has prayers that are of our hearts, but not of our lips. Each of us is facing choices. Each of us might have consequences in store, even if we make the right choices. So we pray, Lord, that you will bless each heart here today. Each beating heart is a testimony to the life that you breathed into us. And we pray that you will vindicate us and our faith. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we offer this prayer, even as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <coughs> thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With joy in our hearts, with a song in our hearts, let us respond graciously with God's tithes and our offerings.
I did overlook one text. It is also a little birdie's job to tell me that today is Heather Brooks's birthday. So happy birthday, Heather. We love you. Be ready for blessings. Do you remember, have you seen, the books called Choose Your Own Adventure? They're quite popular, and they began in the 1970s. There was a man, Edward Packard, who would tell his daughters bedtime stories. And what he would do, he would get to a particular juncture, and he would say, Well, girls, what should Peter do now? And the girls would come up with what they thought this character Peter ought to do. And then he would spin the tale that way. And they loved it. So he wrote some books where every few pages you make a choice. And so here's the way it goes. Let's say Bobby and Billy find a hidden door on a little knoll that was previously hidden behind brambles. It's a thick wooden oak door with an old-fashioned lock, but it's cleared away and flung open. What should Billy and Bobby do next? If Billy and Bobby should run back home and tell their parents and grab a flashlight, go to page 34. If Billy and Bobby are just going to plunge in through the door and see where it leads, go to page 42. Well, today's scripture is a spiritual version of Choose Your Own Adventure. It describes us behind the door as Jesus knocks. When Jesus comes, what will Jesus see? How have God's children prepared? Where are we going? What will be our kingdom adventure? And as we consider this, we have to ask ourselves a question. What does it mean to be prepared? We tend to think of preparation as vigilance, and certainly that is one step. We're called to be vigilant when we're driving, when we're planning for our future, when we're thinking about the coming of our Lord. But, for the most part, 
caring is all about choices. There's a natural disaster on the horizon. A hurricane is hurtling up the Gulf of Mexico. What should we do? If you choose to stock up on non-perishables and water, if you update your emergency contacts and make sure that the church office knows them, and if you make sure there's enough water and enough candles, go to page 32 and continue your adventure. If you want to wait until you're absolutely sure it's coming toward Tallahassee, then run to Walmart and the shelves are all empty and the place is jammed, go to page 46. <laughs> well, how should we prepare for our Lord, for our calling? What choices should we make? Now, if we choose to skip to the most popular page, we'll respond to Jesus by being lethargic, reluctant, rebellious, self-absorbed, self-righteous, judgmental, condescending. Well, that's the most popular choice people make, isn't it? Look around you. There must be a better choice than that. What's another choice, Pastor? Well, on the other end of the spectrum, we may choose to have good intentions, but we don't go very far with them. Or, on the opposite, we slave and desperately attempt to earn the Lord's grace and peace. No, those aren't particularly attractive options either. There is a third choice. Amidst the chaos and conflict that Jesus predicts in this scripture, there is a strong word of hope. You see, God has already prepared for us, and God has prepared joyously. It is God's pleasure to prepare the kingdom for you. Well, who chooses that third option? Those who trust in God's pleasure. Those who hold on to the Lord in faith and trust. Those for whom sacrifice and service issue forth from joy and not from cold, heavy obligation or grinding imperative. Now, the third option can throw us a curve. To be ready for the kingdom, Jesus encourages us to open our hearts so that we are not beholden to the ways of the world, to the treasures of the world, to the priorities of the world. Jesus, we had it going great. You had to start meddling in our lives now. <laughs> well, this is a challenge for each of us, isn't it? Surely, Jesus isn't asking us to give up our money, our security, or our ability to sustain ourselves. Well, no, but we all claim that our hearts are not bound by our possessions or privileges until we lose them or we're forced to give them up. I'm facing that right now. You know, after announcing my retirement, what am I going to do with all this stuff? What am I going to do with all my books? By the way, anybody want theology books? 
I've got plenty of them. Oh, Doug, I'm sure Linda would like to take my library off my hands. Um, well, but it's hard when everything you own has emotional connection to a time, a place, or a person. How different are we from the self-indulgent rich? If we prosper, do we spread more blessings? Or do we bless ourselves more richly? How are we different from hoarders? Is it a matter of substantive difference or just a matter of degree? Is there a middle ground between how we're living our lives and how life would be if our possessions had no hold? The very first verse of today's scripture lesson reminds us of the beautiful gift that we have already been given in Jesus Christ. The blessings of the Lord and the kingdom are already ours. Why? Because our relationship with Jesus brings pleasure to God. In a sense, God has already chosen for us. God loves us not out of imperative or covenant obligation, but out of joy. The eternal choice is that Jesus be a glad and sacrificial servant, that you and I might know that our lives matter to God, and that we are forever loved and blessed. The promises of the kingdom outshine even that for which we dare to hope. Blessing us makes God happy. Therefore, our joy is already assured. Our plans and preparations are really moving backwards. We've already received the reward. We're already walking not in the darkness of individual sin and worldly chaos, but through the open door of God's promises in Jesus Christ. For the faithful Christian, all choices, can lead back to God's promises. Therefore, no matter what distractions and diversions may be in our lives, no matter what the pull of the material world may be, whenever we're offered a choice, remember, Christ frees us from being grasped or captured by the world. The door is already open. By the Lord's grace, we're already promised the riches of the kingdom. The joy of the Christian is that the greatest gift we could ever hope to receive has already been granted. What an adventure. Let us pray. Lord, this scripture and perhaps the entire Bible is, in a sense, a choose-your-own-adventure book. But we're grateful that even if we don't always make the best or perfect choices, that you have already chosen us. What an adventure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In body <coughs> or in spirit, please stand with me for our hymn of parting. Open the eyes of my heart.
tables in the fellowship hall. And even if you aren't sure you want to join, even if you're already a member and just curious, feel free to come and join us. And elders, I hope you will extend wonderful hospitality while I'm making my way back from the front. And I charge us to open the eyes of our hearts to trust that God's pleasure has already revealed the kingdom and its promises, but to remember that we have a calling, that we are called to be a little kinder, a little more generous, and a little more loving than we might otherwise be. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this hour and forever. Amen. You may be seated that the ushers might dismiss us by road.